All right, everyone. Thank you so much to everyone for logging on this morning. I know this is a big effort for our teachers, so shout out to you all. Your, your counselors love and appreciate you. Um, so students, as you probably know, report cards for the first marking period came out last Friday. So at this point in time, you should have a pretty good indication um, about where you stand academically based on your first quarter grades. So hopefully at this point in time, your teachers have passed out your, your um, first quarter report cards to you. You'll be receiving a paper copy. And I'd like to start today, we're going to share some information. You'll hear from all of your counselors for some details about grading and credits and things like that, that we feel like it's important for everyone to just have a reminder about as we look at our first quarter report cards. So I want to start by sharing some details about what you're going to see when you look at your first quarter report card. So I have an example up on the screen here and I'm going to kind of go through and, and show you what you're looking at. So first and foremost at the top is where you have your personal information. So your name, your grade level, the, the school you go to, your counselor, all of those details. Then sort of the second section down here is where your actual grades are. So you're going to see all of your classes, all of your teachers, and then your first marking period grades. Now, if your teachers put any comments in, they're going to be listed here and you can read what the comments mean because they're all going to be numbers. You can read at the bottom of your report card what those comments or what your teachers are saying about you in a particular class. The other things that's listed on here is your absences. So your total number of, number of absences from a particular class. And the comments and the absences kind of go based on what line it is. So these comments here are for if I was the student for world history, and then the number of absences is for world history class with Mr. Hartwell. So the next part of your report card here is where it tells you information about testing, um, service learning hours, and athletics. So the very first thing up top here is your service learning hours. So students who go to Calvert County Public Schools are required to complete service learning or volunteer hours. And this will tell you whether or not your hours are met. And if they're not met, you can visit Ms. O'Neill in the counseling office. She's our service learning coordinator, and she can work with you to make sure that you have those hours done. But they are required to be done as a graduation requirement. So very important. The next part here is state testing requirements. So for algebra, biology, English, and government, there are corresponding state testing requirements that are required for you to complete for graduation. And it will simply tell you on here whether or not those state testing has been met. Um, now, algebra is typically done with algebra one. Biology is done along with your biology class. English is typically done in English 10. And government is typically done in government class, which most of our students take in 10th grade. So if you see something on here that it hasn't been met and you haven't yet taken one of those classes, don't worry because it either can say that you've met it or that you haven't met it. So if you haven't had the chance to take that, that class that goes along with the test yet, you wouldn't have met that requirement. So don't panic. But if you've taken English 10 and it says that you haven't met your English state require your English testing requirements, that's something to work with Ms. Gentile or your English teacher on to get that met. The next part down here is athletics, and this will tell you whether or not you're athletically eligible for winter sports based on your first quarter report card. And you'll hear a little bit more about what it takes to be athletically eligible in a little bit. Um, then the next part of your report card is your attendance information. So this tells you the total number of days that you missed in quarter one and where you stand absence wise. And just as a reminder, you can miss up to 16 days in a school year without being in danger of losing credit. So be mindful of that and make sure you're on track for attendance. The middle part here is information about your GPA. And we're going to break that down in a few minutes so you can understand what those different numbers mean. And then on the right hand side here is information about our, our grading scale, which again, you'll hear information about in a few minutes. So that's sort of the tour of your report card so you know what you're looking at. So I want to touch base about what it takes to pass classes and earn credits each year. Um, so basically what you would need to do is add up the total points that you earn each quarter. Um, if you're in a full year class, you would need a total of 240 points, which means an average of 60. So a 60 for each marking period. So if your grade for the first quarter is below a 60, you're going to need to make up for that in the next three quarters to make sure that you can get your 240 points and pass and earn your credit. Now, if you have a half year class like health, PE, financial lit, things of that nature, you need 120 points between the two quarters that you're in that class in order to pass and earn the credit. 
So again, if you've earned less than a 60, you'll have to make up for that so you can earn that credit. So all you have to do is just add up your, your total points that you get from each quarter. And if it equals 240 at the end of the year, you pass your course, that's for a full year class. And if it's a half year course, you would um, need 120 points. Um, now grades do get bumped up to a 50. So if your grade is less than a 50 for the first, second or third marking period for a full year class, and for a semester course, the first quarter that you're in there, you get that bump up to a 50. However, in the fourth quarter and in the second quarter of a half year class, you get the grade that you earn. So there's no bump up to 50. So just so we're all on the same page for that, um, we wanna make sure you're passing your credits and moving on. Now, Dr. Perry is going to share some information with you all about your GPAs and the different types of GPAs. Hello, everyone. So. Your current GPA, your grade point average, um, is just for the quarter related to the specific report card. So for example, uh, right now your current GPA is reflective of quarter one, which the quarter is that we just completed. This is what is used for honor roll and athletic eligibility. Now your year to date GPA is for each individual year, okay? So all four quarters into one. And then your cumulative GPA is for every quarter earned in high school, okay? All right, so this is what colleges and scholarships will review is the cumulative GPA. All right, next slide, please. All right, so athletic eligibility, very important, okay? It is required that you have at least a 70% GPA with no more than one failing grade. So this example right below is where you have one failing grade, but you also have a couple of lower grades, like a few Ds and some Cs and a B rolled into there. So the moral of the story is do the best that you can because having low marks can really um, impact you having that below 70% to be athletically eligible. All right, your, your eligibility is based on your report card and you can become ineligible in the middle of the season, okay? Um, interims, however, can help you become eligible. So please do the best that you can at all parts of the quarter, just so that you can make sure that you are able to still be eligible and play on the team. All right, your interim cannot make you ineligible. It can only help you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. This is Ms. Gray. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about how you can move on from, uh, from one grade level to the next. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how, how many credits you're going to need to get to that next grade level. So from, for students who are grade levels nine and will be going to 10, they would need to earn five credits. Um, and they would also have to have, have taken and passed English, one English. And then students from 10th to 11th, they need 11 credits. So you would have to take and earn 11 credits, um, as well as two English uh, classes you need to pass. And then finally, from 11th grade to 12th grade, you have to have earned 17 credits and you have to have at least three Englishes. All right, so that means that you need a total of 23 credits for graduation. Um, and it's important that you all really remember that um, your credits count. Um, it's definitely different from those of you who are in the ninth grade. It's def definitely different from middle school. Um, you have to earn those credits to get to the next level. Um, also, it's important to know that every class is not offered in summer school. So it's important that you take your classes, pass them because it's not guaranteed that you can take it during the summer. Next slide. All right, so some quick takeaways that we want to make sure that you um, you kind of um, um, kind of take away. <laughs> the first one is if you did not have a successful first quarter, uh, you can still get your grades up. So the good news is that it's pretty early in the year, so you can get those grades up. So we want to make sure that we encourage you. We're giving you a lot of information about what can't happen and what could happen, but um, like I said, the great news is that it's early and you still can get those grades up um, with um, working really hard to pass those classes. Uh, the next takeaway we want you to, um, to think about is that each quarter matters. So your cum cumulative GPA is what is reported 
um, with colleges and scholarships. So you want to make sure that um, you're you're being mindful of that because your 11th grade and your uh, 12th grade year comes really fast. So you want to make sure that you do your very best in school uh, because it all matters. Um, yes, so every class matters. So make sure that you um, you're earning those credits. If you need help, uh, make sure you're reaching out to your counselors. And Miss O'Neill, you can take it away. All right, so our grading scale, this is at the bottom right hand corner of your report card. Um, there on the left hand side is the marking period percent grades. Um, so 93 to 100, um, that is equivalent to a 4.0 on a 4.0 scale and a 5.0 on a scale for AP courses. So that specific percent is different for each um, course as far as non-AP and AP. Um, the non-AP course, so that 4.0 scale, that is going to be what's called your unweighted GPA. And on that 4.0 scale is going to be that um, 5.0 scale. So you can see the breakdown. It's on your report card. Um, if you're curious on how to calculate your GPA, it's based on those marking period percent grades, and that's equivalent to the scale on um, the chart as well. Next slide. So some tips for success, use CAV time for tutoring or to make up assignments. This is a great opportunity for you to do any kind of retakes. If you have zeros that you know are still within those deadlines, please go see your teacher during CAV time. It is essential that you use that and use that wisely and purposely um, just because you want to continue to work hard to make those grades, to earn those credits and all of the things. So use CAV time for that purpose. Working lunch, that is offered on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays in room 222. So if you get your lunch and then go out to the atrium and then um, turn left, it'll be the CAV Cafe. This is a chance for you to get a breakdown of your assignments and things that you can still make up and have that chance to use that lunchtime to be able to make up those assignments. We also have Saturday school that's going to be starting soon. This is... Um, a chance for you to come to school on Saturday and to also make up those missing assignments. Um, you may receive an invitation to this, but keep in mind we do have that opportunity. And then one of the most important things that you can do no matter what is to monitor Hack and Schoology regularly to see your current grades. It's important that you keep up with them, keep up with those due dates, keep up with those deadlines, make sure that you are turning in assignments um, because that is how you earn your grades is to turn in those assignments and get those high, high marks on those. Um, so take advantage of all of these things that we have built in, all of these tips for success to make you more successful in high school. You're muted, Ms. Ponte. Oops, I totally forgot to hit mute. Um, or unmute. Um, so thank you everyone for your time and attention today, teachers. I know this is really difficult to log on, so I appreciate all of you and your diligence in doing this. Students, I hope your first quarter report card is one that you can hang on your refrigerator, but if not, you have plenty of time to come back and earn your credits and finish the year strong. So don't forget your teachers are here, your counselors are here, administrators are here. We are all here to help and support you in order to do the best you can. Um, we want to see, see you be successful. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much.